Hi everybody, today I'm going to show you a new feature we've added in the MemSQL engine that enhances our audit log. If you're not familiar with our audit log, the audit log is a way you can track user activities from queries and changing DDL to any activity that's running on your cluster. We've added two new features. The first one I'm going to show you is introducing the ability to track logins in the audit log. This includes both failed logins and successful logins. So I have a cluster running here, as you can see, with four nodes. I'm going to enable the audit log. As you know, audit logging is disabled by default because there is a slight performance impact given the fact that you are committing every transaction to disk. So I'm going to run a command to enable the audit log. Our log audit log is done in levels. So if you enable the first level, you're only going to get what's associated with the first level. If you enable the second level, you'll get everything that's associated with the second level and the first level. And you can see all the levels in our documentation. But I'm going to start with the logins only level. Now, as a note, the logins only level is the first level of audit logging. So you'll only get logins if you enable this. Great, so this is the command you can use to update your the audit log level to start logging logins only. Note that I've used MemSQL CTL here, but you could also update the MemSQL CNF directly or use MemSQL admin. Great, this is the confirmation page that tells me what it's going to do to each node. Note that the audit log level is not a sync variable and it, you have to restart the nodes in order for it to take effect. So I'm going to use MemSQL CTL to restart the nodes as well. Great, the restart is underway. Then what we're going to do is we're going to log into the SQL editor and run a query and then we'll be able to and, and log in as well and then you'll see those updates in the audit log. So this action will enable audit logging and set it to logins only. Great, now I'm going to navigate to this window that has, I'm going to log in as root into the database. And let's double check the audit log variable. As you can see, the audit log level of logins only has been enabled. And we've logged in as root. I'm also going to create another user. called test, and we're going to intentionally log in with a, with a wrong password and see what happens in the audit log. Great, since we have logins only, we're not logging queries just yet. I'm not going to run anything else until we update the audit log level. So now we're going to navigate to the data directory where audit log lives. By default, it lives at varlib memsql. And I'm going to go to navigate to the audit log, the master aggregator directory. Great, this is a master aggregator. And I know this because the port is 3306. So now I'm going to go into the audit logs directory and cat the audit logs. Great, as you can see, there's a couple, the log was reopened on restart, and there's a couple of entries here. These are only associated to logins. These are the logins that I did into the database, and you can see that it tells you all the standard information you get with audit logging today, except there's this fixed field called user login. There is information about an IP address. There's information about what grant they're using to log in. In this case, it was root. And it does tell you if there's a success or failure. Now I'll show you what happens if you, uh, we have a failed login. I'm going to switch over to my other window here. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to change my user to the user just we just created. And I'm going to put an incorrect password in. As expected, the access was denied. I'm going to cat the audit log again. And as you can see, another entry in the file showed up as expected that shows this was a user login with the user test. But this time, there was a failure. 
The other feature that I wanted to point out was we now provide information about what level we're logging at in the file. Previously, we did not have this information. So if you first start up a audit log and change the audit log level to from not having it initiated before, we will say log level initiated at logins only. Now, if we change the audit log level and restart the system, it'll the message will, will be different. And if the log was rotated and a new log was open for that reason, it'll just tell you what level we're logging at and it won't indicate any change. Let's show an example of how this works. So what I'm going to do here is update the log level to admin only, which is the next level up from, from logins only. And in this, with admin only, we, aren't, we won't just be showing logins. We'll also be showing DDL level queries or queries that only the administrative level can do. And note that these coexist in the same file, but the template for what they what each meaning looks different. So, for example, you'll see that when we log queries, there this user log and field will not exist. And you can learn more about what we have, what we log for user logins and what we log for queries in our documentation. So I'm just going to go ahead and update this to admin only. Great, it's giving me a confirmation. And because the audit with the audit log, you have to take do a restart for it to take into effect. I'm going to do a restart of all the nodes. Great, this might take a second. And what I'm going to do now, since we have admin only, is I'm going to log into the database again and run an administrative level query like create database. And you'll see what shows up in the audit logs when we initiate that change. Great. So I'm going to log in again as root. I'm going to run create database. Or first, let's actually check. Let's make sure that our audit log level is updated and it looks like it has. We are now at logging at a level called admin only. Then I'm going to create database T. So this, this statement should get logged in the audit log file now. Great, looks like it was successful. So we're going to go back into our audit log directory. And now there's a new audit log file as expected because we restarted the system and changed the audit log level. So we're going to cat this file. Great, as you can see, there's a lot more in this file because we're now logging admin level queries. So you can see the last line of the file is create database. And that's what we logged here. And I also wanted to point out that we already had the audit log enabled, but we changed it to admin only. So we now have a message in the first header of the file that says log level change to admin only. So in summary, we added a user login field, which you can see coexists with the same file that we supported previously. And it demonstrates login successes and failures. And we also added the ability to identify what level you're logging at and if logging was initiated or if the level was changed. Thank you for watching. We hope these features allow you to more effectively leverage our auto logging functionality.